thought how many times you used your hands for all sorts of functions. Like right now, I'm using my hands to express myself. In just a short moment, we're going to show you a clip that we put together that will give you just a glimpse of some of the functions of your hands. And then our guest, Dr. Taizun Baksamusa, an orthopedic surgeon at the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, is going to talk to us about the extraordinary anatomy of our hands and how our hands communicate with our brains for both motor and sensory functions and all other sorts of interesting facts. So on that note, let's begin. Take a look. The hand, I was really interested in the in treatment of the hand because the hand is one of the most complicated uh, parts of the human anatomy. We have a really complex interplay of many different organ systems. We have the skin, the tendons, the arteries, the nerves, the skeletal system. I find that the hand is very complicated and very interesting in the sense that we have a tremendous amount of anatomy in a small amount of space. We have the wrist and forearm, which is the radius and ulna, we have eight different carpal bones, which is basically a bag of bones that articulate with the rest of the hand or the metacarpals, and then the phalanges or fingers. In this hand interplay, we find that the tendons actually all uh, coordinate their function quite uh, synchronized, and if one finger is out of uh, sorts, that may affect the other fingers. The most important function in here actually comes from the thumb, and the thumb is what separates us from uh, the primitive primates, giving us the opposable thumb. Do you know what uh, actually is the least important finger in the hand? Um, my guess is the pinky. Actually, it's the index finger. It's if we have an injury to the index finger, what we can often find is that we'll bypass the index finger and go right to the middle finger or the ring finger. The thumb, however, is the most important uh, finger in the hand because it acts as a post as well as the opposable thumb, which gives us the ability to pinch, grasp, and have the prehensile function. When I was talking about the interplay of the tendons and the fingers, a perfect example is the ancient Roman, uh, Roman chariot or quadrigia effect that we see in these flexor tendons. What we find is that the flexor tendons to the fingers, there's two main tendons. There's one that's a deep flexor tendon and one that's a superficial flexor tendon. The deep flexor tendons attach closer to the tips of the fingers while the superficial ones attach and move closer to these joints. The superficial ones can move independently so you can have independent function of the fingers and the deep flexors give us the, the more forceful grip. However, the deep flexors originate from one muscle belly. If that deep flexor has one tendon that is asynchronous or out of sorts with the rest of the tendons, that can cause a dysfunction with the remaining fingers. Say if we keep the fingers out at length, you can try this on your own hand, you keep the fingers out to length and bend this finger down. This is your superficial flexor that's bending your ring finger, but you'll see there's absolutely no tension in the deep flexor which is out here. And that's basically like those Roman chariots where we find that one horse goes out of sync and that can throw off the rest of the other three horses that are pulling the chariot. So, but are we able to live without our pinky? I mean, as you said, it's not that it's the 
Index actually, finger, I mean, well, I don't even think of what I use my pinky for, really, to... Actually, this is another tri uh, trick you can try at home. If you had to pick three fingers in the hand that, are the mo that you had to keep and give up the other two, what we find is that this side of the hand, the radial side of the hand, the thumb, and, well, the thumb, I would never give up the thumb. That's the most important. So I would have to look at which two of these other fingers are going to give me my function. If we look at what's called the radial side, and that's because it's closer to the radius, mm -hmm. so the radial side would be the index and middle finger. These are more precision grasping and twisting. And you'll notice that if you were going to keep your three fingers, the thumb, index, and middle finger, and try to swing a hammer, you can actually precisely hold that hammer, but you can't really generate much power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if you switch those fingers and go to the ulnar side of the hand, which is, again, towards the ulna bone, so that's how we describe that side of the hand, the ulnar side of the hand, those are the ring finger and small finger. Now take that same hammer and grab the hammer with your ring and small finger in the thumb, Again, you might not control it as well, but you can generate a lot more power. Mm -hmm. So we find that the ulnar side of the hand is more power grip, and the radial side of the hand is more precision grip. So how does the hand work in the relation to the brain? That's right? the, the only part of the brain that actually controls or has more complicated uh, function of the body is actually speech, and the face and the lips and speech part of the brain. It's called the homunculus, and if you look at on the homunculus of the brain, you find that the hand function is so complicated, it uh, comprises over 25% of the function of the cortical part of the brain that controls our intricate functions of the hand. And what about, though, in terms of the, the sensory function of your hand, that you, you touch something that's hot, you don't know it's hot, how in that moment, like how fast are we talking about that the brain communicates These with the hand in this These are instantaneous, moments? instantaneous. There's different types of nerve fibers that we have. We have these light touch receptors, deep touch pressure receptors, we have pain receptors, and each of these nerves travel in uh, almost like electrical impulses in, uh, along electrical wiring. And these, actually these nerves go towards the, uh, f towards the brain to give the impulses back to the brain to, to uh, evaluate, and then send it to the motor impulse, which goes back to the hand hmm. to affect out the function. And this is just I mean, Instantaneous. uh, instantaneously. Instantaneously. <laughs> <laughs> so Dr. Fox Musa, you've worked with the hand for what, over a dozen years. Why are you so passionate about the hand? I find that the hand is really, we use this day to day, and everyone thinks it's just a small bone, a small body part, it's not that big a deal, until you actually have a problem with your hand. And then you realize how big of a deal this really is and how much of a dysfunction it is. And once you actually have these problems, uh, you realize how it really puts a crimp in your day-to-day -day activities and your lifestyle. And a lot of these conditions are actually quite s easily solvable. And when I see patients that have been living with a problem and trying to deal or adapt to it, and it's something that may not even require surgery or something as simple as a cortisone injection, it really is gratifying to be able to find the problem and solve it and help patients get back to productive uh, lives. All right, Dr. Boxinza, well, thank you so much. Thank Dr. Boxinza is going to come back for a second episode with NeuroRapt talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. And on that note, that concludes our segment. We hope that you've gained a new appreciation for your hands. And that's a wrap for NeuroRapt. We'll see you next time.